guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part two of lesson 12.2. We've got two objectives for this video. We're going to evaluate one-sided limits and we're going to evaluate limits of difference quotients. One way we saw that a limit wouldn't exist is if our function approached a different number as we came in from the left or as we came in from the right. But sometimes we still want to look at what's happening around that value. So we can use one-sided limits to help us out there. So if we take a look at this first one, we've got the limit of f of x as x approaches c with this little negative sign on it. That little negative sign means we're approaching from the left-hand side. If we compare that to directly below it, we've got this superscript plus sign. That means we're approaching from the right-hand side. So since we're just focusing on one side at a time, that's why these things are called one-sided limits. So for this example, we've got the function f of x equals the absolute value of 2x over x. And I'm going to use my calculator so we can take a look at this one graphically. So on my y equals screen, I've already got our function typed in. So if I hit graph, we get a picture that looks something like this. And we want to look at this as x is approaching 0. Well, we can see that as our graph approaches 0, we're looking at a couple of different values. So this limit doesn't actually exist. But we can look at each piece individually. So as we approach 0 from the left-hand side, we can see that our one-sided limit is negative 2. But as we approach 0 from the right-hand side, we can see that this one-sided limit is positive 2. So the limit of our function as x approach 0 from the left-hand side, we said that was going to be negative 2. And the limit of our function as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, we said that one was positive 2. Another way we can use one-sided limits is to help us determine if a limit exists. So we've got this piecewise defined function. We've got 4 minus x for x values that are less than 1. And we've got 4x minus x squared for x values that are greater than 1. And what we want to do is we want to take a look at this limit as x approaches 1. But the problem is we've got two separate pieces. And it doesn't say which one to use if x is equal to 1. So what we're going to do first is we're going to approach this 1 from the left-hand side. So we're checking out this top piece of our function, since that's where we're dealing with x values that are less than 1. Now we can use direct substitution here to plug that 1 in for x. So we get 4 minus 1, which is 3. Then we're going to look at this limit as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side. So now we'll have to look at the other piece of our function, so 4x minus x squared. And again, we can use direct substitution here. We can just plug in 1 for our x values. So we've got 4 times 1 minus 1 squared. Well, 4 times 1 is 4 minus 1. We get 3. Since we ended up with the same number as we approached 1 from the left and the right-hand side, then we would say the limit of this function as x approaches 1 is 3. In calculus, limits will be very, very important. And one limit you'll see a lot is a limit of something called a difference quotient. So I've got a difference quotient shown here. It's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And the limit we're going to do is as h is approaching 0. So let's say for this difference quotient, we were going to look at the function f of x equals x squared minus 1. Then what we want to do is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. Now before we can actually do this limit, we need to look at this actual difference quotient stuff that's happening. So I'm focusing on this first piece right here where it says f of 3 plus h. What that means is in our function, we need to replace our x with 3 plus h. So then the first part of this difference quotient will say 3 plus h squared minus 1. And then on this second piece, we've got minus f of 3. So we're going to subtract off. And now we have to plug in 3 for this function. So 3 squared minus 1. And then on bottom, we've just got h. Now with this 3 plus h in parentheses squared, we're going to have to FOIL that out and combine some like terms. When we do that, we should get 9 plus 6h plus h squared. And then we still have this minus 1. If we look at simplifying the second piece down, well, 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8. So we've got minus 8 on the end. And then this is all still over h. And there's even more simplifying that we can do. If we combine like terms on top, out front we've got a 9, and then we've got a minus 1 and a minus 8. So all of that stuff is going to cancel out. So we've got 6h plus h squared all over h. And we're still looking at this limit as h approaches 0. 
if we were to try to plug 0 into this, we would get that 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So I'm going to do a little dividing out. And on top, I want to factor out an h. So we've got 6 plus h left over. And that's all over h. So those things cancel out. So now we've got this limit as h approaches 0 of 6 plus h. And now if we do direct substitution, we end up with 6 as our answer. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.